Thanks for staying with us now. The major selling point of boarding schools is that they instill character, self-confidence, and self-reliance. It may be true that boarders can grow into competitive and domineering adults, and these are qualities well rewarded in our society. However, the cost in many cases is surely too great in terms of the trauma of early abandonment and institutional institutionalization, uh, the symptoms of which are clearly seen in adults who are hardened, pressured, they do not permit themselves normal weaknesses or failure, they are resistant to loving and being loved. And some have said that the sexuality that they express today are a function of the exposure and habits they had picked up in boarding schools. So our question therefore tonight is, are boarding schools encouraging or, or are they culpable for the rise in homosexuality? Now let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 And tonight when you're sending in your messages and when we open our phone lines and you want to call, please, you can remain anonymous if you truly want to share your story with us because it's important that we talk about these things. They are not easy to talk about, but we have to talk about it. Absolutely. All right, so let me come to you, EC, first before I come to Alpha. Yes. Um, your thoughts on the conversation of homosexuality. And I'll tell you why mm -hmm. this topic came on board. It's like recently, about two weeks or three weeks now in the news, a lot of women coming out to say, oh, their spouses, you know, um, swing both ways, you yes. know, and all of that. And we're now wondering, okay, what exactly? That's wrong. So I took out time to go read up on homosexuality, you know, and lesbianism, because mm -hmm. it's not just gay being gay and being a lesbian. Mm -hmm. A lot of revelations that I had got was that it, it, some of these people actually picked up this habit from secondary school yeah. and it just stuck. Yeah. So it now brought me back to when I was in secondary school or pre-secondary school. I remember I was in um, my final year, I was about to go to GSS one okay. and I remember a girl in our neighborhood then came and told me that, ah, if I'm going to school, let me select. So it was, a, it was an all-girls school. Let mm -hmm. me select her school, Federal Government Girls College. She was not telling me. So me, I played along. Because hmm. I wanted her to tell me to the extent at which she had gone. That, ah, no, this, that. So she was telling me how at GSS 1, she was introduced to lesbianism and she's loving the experience the that ah, she cannot wait for me. Because she really liked me. Hmm. And she cannot wait for me to come. I say, okay, no problem. And she, they go like that. Now I tell my mama, my papa say, this is a different school. So that was... The, so she, when she said it, she said it out of the innocence, thinking that because we loved each other as friends, yeah. maybe I would accept that offer and now come to her school. That Absolutely. I'm going to have a good time. She'll take care of me. She'll be my, my mother. I'll be my, school, sing, my mom. school mom and all of that. <laughs> but that mm. in, was the introduction for her. Exactly. I don't know where she is today. Honestly, I do not know how far she's gone. But I know so many people that... That was their introduction, and today they are full-blown, you know, homosexuals. But let me hear your thoughts. Okay. Well, first let me take it from the angle of as an, um, should I say, um, a student in school. You are in school, you are in a single school or a missed school. And what we usually tell our children is, don't go get pregnant. Don't, if anything happens to you, what will happen? You will be in trouble. So that's number one. So if another girl makes a pass at you and says, hey, let's get this I like you. going, what she will think of, the first thing is, I, I won't, won't get, get pregnant. pregnant. And of course, you know, at that age, they're, they're, they're teens. So they, they are, their hormones are all over the place. They want to experience, they want to um, um, experiment different things and know different things. And in the course of this, what happens is that they get imbibed into a particular culture that they are not used to, but they can learn to ab um, absorb. It's just like somebody having a bad habit. I, I smoke cigarette or I smoke weed. Okay, and because a friend of mine introduced me to it, ah, my mom said, if I do it, I will go mad. Hmm. But the moment I tried it, and I didn't go mad, I didn't go mad, and I liked it. 
Now that's another level. Mm. Then you now take it to the next level, mm. and which is now taking it as a culture that this is who you are and that is what you want. Mm. Now a child's tenacity to also, you know, face the peer pressure that comes with this. Maybe everybody around you is doing it, especially in this in the in the same sex school. Okay? You find these individuals in this environment doing all of these, if it's a male school or is a female school, mm. because they do not have an outlet where they can actually go and experience the other sex. They now find themselves trying to experiment and so you think it's, with it is each much other, more and they get used to that particular style of, absolutely. you know, um, interaction yeah. with the other sex. Mm. Now, who is to blame? I wouldn't say it's the parent, I wouldn't say it's the school. Because the school is not to blame because they are not there 247. They're not there when the students are asleep. I recall um, back in the days, um, in a particular school, the story was told to me about individuals who are in a, in a, given, in a given school. I don't want to call names. And when they were in this school, what they usually do at night is the, the girls will, will um, put, um, what's it called, will cover their bed space, you know, make it enclosed and, you know, nobody gets to see what is inside. That means they're actually practicing something in it. Mm. That's the initiation process. That's the initiation process. Mm. And if you, are, if you have a bed space and you do not have some sort of covering, that means you have nothing to hide. Mm. But most times you see them covered, you know, the bed spaces are covered, that means that at night something goes down. So that is like a trademark for them to understand that this is what they are into. Mm. Let me rest my case here. <laughs> Alpha, Alpha. <laughs> the is yours. So do you think boarding houses, because you are in a boarding house, do you think boarding houses are breeding grounds for homosexuality? Do you think it enables people to go into that act of homosexuality? Oh, no, not necessarily. I don't feel like boarding houses are breeding houses for homosexuality. I think that it's more accurate to say that they're breeding houses for misunderstanding. Okay. Because what a lot of young people go into boarding houses lacking is an understanding of what they're going to actually do when they are grown. Because it's like, think about it, in primary school you're a child, in university and an adult, what happens in the growing process? Nobody has actually ever told you how it works, what you're supposed to do when you grow up. It's just don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And then there are lots of, all of it, like it's a child's natural function, or what I say, natural way of thinking to question things. So like what Training. she said, if you don't give them the actual adequate reason why you shouldn't do these things, I'm like, so what's stopping me? So I just feel like homosexuality is just one of the many other things that are accustomed to having a lack of understanding when you enter a boarding school. Because most people, since what they heard from maybe their parents or their former schools or their churches is don't talk to girls, don't let a boy touch you, you'll get pregnant, that kind of a thing. They don't actually know what happens when it plays it's out. same sex. Exactly. So it's, it's just a whole bubble of confusion that just like... And <laughs> you know, <laughs> that pressure plays a huge role in it as well. Do you think if so? You so have, I have, if I have someone, in environment I have someone that um, had a relative living with them in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This relative was a guy and he started sodomizing her son. So what then <clears throat> eventually happened when he was found out was he was driven away. Hmm. But then again, you really cannot tell. You know, the reason I would say that is a mixed feeling for me. Um, a lot of people are, so what parents do that take their, some parents, not all, some parents that take their children to boarding houses, they feel like I am going there to dump the child for correction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of these children are already dysfunctional from wherever it is that they're coming from. Precisely. So you feel like the boarding house, by the time they get to the boarding house, because the boarding house is supposedly supposed to be the place to correct some abnormalities that the child Absolutely. may exhibit. Yeah. So you see these people take these children and they go dump them mm. in the boarding houses to think with the hope that there will be some correctional processes that would happen in the boarding house. Mm. Yeah. But it's not all that at some point because those people, if the child is strong enough, 
that one child can con can influence the entire I children. Want to get to that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I have um, a lot of friends that came from overseas hmm. into boarding school in Nigeria, and then like, I know these people personally. And then in the period of time of boarding school, they a lot of them actually got to understand why it is that their parents are how they are got to get the discipline that their parents were probably looking for. Exactly. But then there are some. So I'm not sure if everybody is aware, but then this homosexuality of a thing has escalated homosexuality alone. Now there is an entire society called LGBTQ+. Plus. Absolutely. That plus is for Anything other you want things. To be exactly. So the power of definition has been bastardized and just being thrown all over the place. Everybody can now decide this is the kind of person that I want to be without actually being considerate of the other person or the people that they influence and affect. So the LGBTQ, these people that are coming from overseas understand that concept because Absolutely. it's the kind of thing that... Every, it's normal for them exactly, in their society. It's normal for them in their society. Mm -hmm. But then for us, we're a bit more... Conservative. Um, conservative, exactly. So when they bring that notion from there over to here, usually they're even more... When I say they're usually more... Usually, you know, more expressive, yes, and then they're usually older than us. So, like, it's very easy to be able to look at this person and be like, okay, this person's from overseas and is older than me. I should respect this person. I should okay. see this person as a role model. Hmm. So, if they bring that notion of the LGBTQ to our secondary school, it hmm. just becomes like a... A trend. Yes, exactly. It catches, it comes it like catches a, fire. Exactly. And then people are like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy is supposed to be one of the... Oh, I don't he's know, exposed. Cool. Exactly, he's exposed. So... I should follow him. It wouldn't make sense if I didn't follow him. So then the peer pressure now aligns everybody like morphs to a light. So that's yeah. how it happens sometimes. Not yeah. all, but then sometimes. So you see, peer pressure plays a huge role in, you know, um, you know how should I say initiating them into that um, sect of life style. It, I wouldn't say that it's, it's, the ch it's, a ch the, it's a fault of the child. It's not a child's fault. It is the fact that the child has been programmed in a particular way. We should not insult our elders. We should not. We should try and belong to a particular set of people. Or for some reason, they feel that oh, they are missing out on something, yeah. and they want to be a part of the trend. Mm. So, when you find yourself in that position, that okay, you're missing something, and you want to let, let me use the word. Um, social climbing, we talked about social climbing. This yeah. is part of the social climbing. And you are in a, an enclosed environment where, like you said in the, in the quote, things get magnified. So if you do not, look, children are mean. They can be so mean because when they are expressing themselves, they're expressing themselves without any reservation. And they go straight to the point without, <laughs> you know, coping it in any form or in any way. It's essential that we try to understand, you know, make the children who we have at home before we take, take them to the boarding school to understand who they, they are. are. Hmm. It's important. You know what? Let us take it because I want to, I'd like to open our phone lines early. Um, and also, I, I mean, uh, I had a story for, we, or we heard Together. Marianne shared her story. Absolutely. So when we come back from the break, we'll share her experience as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we have a gentleman in our midst. <laughs> and we're asking, are boarding schools breeding grounds for homosexuality? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 Our phone line is now open. Please, when you call, call um, turn off the volume of your television set so we can hear you clearly. Turn it off. Turn off the volume of your television set. Um, you can call us on 0702500749. 0702500749. People send SMSs to that number. Please, when you want to send an SMS, the SMS number is what we reeled up before. This is just for phoning, that's all. All right, so before we went on a break, I had mentioned Marianne. Yeah. With her permission, she said to share. 
I mean, she was really looking forward the, toward the conversation. And she said she didn't go to a boarding house. She actually went to a day school. It was a boarding house that was taken over by the government that eventually became a day school. And I mean, even in that day school, she remember her first introduction to lesbianism was the fact that a senior tried to touch tr her. came no, to... Okay. Not even tried. It was Talk pressing her. her chest because there was nothing there, you know. And the, the senior was, you know, I, you know, in the name of school mothers. Mm -hmm. We understand. And this Berian story still relates with every other. There's like, okay, like me now. I was introduced to lesbianism, but it did not stick because, again, and I want to take it piggy back to what Alpha had talked about environment. You know, when you when you are abroad, the the community, everything you see is rainbow. Everything is welcoming everything is accept accepting Accepted. so it did it would not have stuck yeah. you know if i am um, i mean it would have stuck to me rather if i were abroad because yeah. somebody actually introduced and tried to do the practice lesbianism on me but it did not just stick mm -hmm. right yeah. okay so we have a first caller mm -hmm. salamu alaikum abdul gafar from gombe state thank you for calling yeah thank you yeah. Can I hear Abdul Gafar? Are you there? Oh, we're having troubles hearing him. Or... Mm. So. Uh, okay. So, 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 so I was saying that you know, I was introduced to that you yeah. know, but it didn't stick because I had, you know. We were not in an environment. Imagine, where that, where see, that encouraged. Easy, look at me. I'm a tomboy from head to toe. I love my jeans. I will love my sneakers. And so I, when I see some people doing tomboy and saying, oh, because you know, there are some things that you are like that. But that doesn't mean that I have to be a same-sex person. I can be sporty. I can be this, and I can still be very, very feminine, right? It still boils down to self-esteem. Yeah, you know. What? Let me take another call. I hope we hear them again. Peter from Benin, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Good evening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what you say? <laughs> Thank you for calling. I'm a fan of this uh, program. Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic, top, fantastic topic. We need this topic in our modern times now. Absolutely. Yeah, the topic is the body house, the breathing ground. In this internet age, I totally agree that it's a breeding ground for homosexuality because um, on the internet now anything is possible. For us parents in this part of the world, constant mentoring and constant prayers for our children. Children, they live by example. So we must constantly be observant as parents and constantly talk to them and make them know that there is good and there is bad. Mm. But this is my fear. The internet has made the Western culture to feel that their culture is superior to us. Everybody in the Western culture, they have this philosophy of excessive freedom. Mm. Yeah. And excessive freedom breeds body when in the western world now there are some certain things you cannot even talk to your children a seven years old child sees a man and a man and he calls father father he comes home and tells an african man that's in diaspora that mom dad my friend has a father and a father a mother and a mother that's their own problem. But we down here, we must constantly mentor our children that we have culture. Because what is bad is bad. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much for your summation. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned superior culture. So, I mean, yeah. this was what I was saying about environment, you know, because yeah. what Peter just said is so apt. Yeah. If I was in a different climb, I am so sure that with the traits that I have, mm -hmm. being very, you know, like, you know, I'm, all, I'm a driven person, yeah. very choleric and all of Somebody would almost take it to be that, oh, you have to be a lesbian. Yeah. 
yes. you understand you have to look impose in a certain way and you. and impose it on me so yeah. because you know so now picking it back to boarding houses right so when marianne was talking about even that was not even a boarding house and this was her experience mm -hmm. it is it is the reality and because these are senior students, like Alpha, I think it was Alpha that mentioned that because you look up to them, you can't question them. These are senior students, almost like uh, and, um, laying hands on you oh, to, co to take on the mantle. Exactly. You know, so it's a ripple effect. It's a circle. Yes. You know. So that's where self-esteem comes in. You know what? No. I think we have Gafar again. I'll come to you guys. Right. Salamu alaikum, Gafar. Thank you for calling. Alaikum salam. Good evening, uh, Thank the you. network did not allow me to really hear my uh, opinion about the news. Now you're in uh, your life. So um, I won't really say it is a body school per se, but if you think who wants, I mean the boys only and the girls only. Mm -hmm. Because I happen to serve in a all boys school that was close by a new college in the city, and I witnessed the class and molestation of these young boys. And it usually happens with the senior. They are senior, uh, maybe the ones at the higher class, they say, yes, the three. And after them, I got employed and worked in the federal government girls' school, which uh, brought me to submit that I will never ever take my child, a boy or a girl, to a single body school. The same sex school. Majority of these people, majority of these girls, they are exposed, and internet is not really working in that time at all. And, uh, they have this watch a lot of things. Their parents do not even put cognizance into what is watched at home. Yeah. Just come to the school and see it as a jumping and start doing a lot of things. So we need to really, really imbibe the culture of our, our tradition in this system. Because uh, with, um, with this white Western culture has really taken over our culture and tradition. Some of us don't even know how this is happening. So uh, it, it would be nice if we can uh, teach our children the culture and tradition how where we come from. So we go to the school and go and the But I must tell you that it is not actually all the body school, but single ones, the boys only and the girls only. Only. Okay, the thank you. What is, what is going on there? Thank you so much, Abdul Ghaffar. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, <laughs> even for mixed schools, sorry, let me come to Alpha because you were telling me something about mixed mm -hmm. schools. Is it is this so much true that, okay, it's more of the single schools? Even for mixed schools, you, you, you said something I would like you to talk about. Okay. So as I come to my answer to that question, I think was it Peter that said something about culture? That we that we see the Western culture as, as superior, superior yes. to us. So my question is, what is our culture? Mm. Because if you think about it, when we go to school, what we go to school to learn basic topics about things that we actually have no need for most mm. of the times. So is that fact that we don't really have practical usage of the things that we learn on a day-to-day -day basis? Is that confusion that I'm coming back to? So think about it if. In a certain set, um, certain setting, someone keeps pushing down certain instructions, certain rules, certain things that you're supposed to be doing all of the time on you. As a child, if you don't see that re reason for the person doing that, you're, the person that is pushing down those rules is doing the reverse and emptying the child. Mm. So when the person empties that child, the child is left searching, yeah. searching for anything that can fill that child back up. Yeah. So in the process, it finds people that are willing to accept Exactly. And then those people that are willing to accept, they offer them notions like this homosexuality of eating. And then that is the only thing that the child is seen as welcoming instead of um, discriminatory. Mm. So the child will accept it. And then since this person is taking me, fine, I will be homosexual with him. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead. You want to say? I'm Kenny to. from Lagos. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling. Let's hear what you have to say, Kenny. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kenny. Kenny, thank I you. Don't, I don't believe that body school is a winning ground yeah. for homosexuality. And that's because there is so much influence on the internet. I feel the major thing is parents should create time for their children. Because children are free to enter the second school. Yeah. Mm. Daddy is not available, he's not available. The children are formed. Mm. 
the school that my son goes to, they monitor them, they make sure they perform SS1, they have different hostels for them because they need to have changes for such things, mm. and they have husbands that keep with them. Mm. So we should create time, we should create time for parents than for children. That is the mutual thing, that is it. There is no child that will not go to peer pressure. Adults go to peer pressure. But yeah. for a child, the child is fully formed, there is no pressure. Mm. I tell my children, I love you, I will tolerate to them. So nobody's going to tell them outside. I love you. You tell my son and I tell my dog. So whatever it is, they tell me. There is nothing they don't tell me. So we have to build that bond with our children. Thank you, Kemi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kemi. Yeah, you're going to say something. I mean, it's apt what she's saying because a lot of times, you know, why it seems like the boarding house is the dumping ground it is like the, re the rejected children like you know what the parents don't have time they go to dump them in they the school if i had to call my children do you feel like we're pushing you guys <laughs> because let me know <laughs> because my own is not hard the reason me you know so, so the uh, the reason i opted for boarding house is quite far from you know the fact that i actually do enjoy the company of my children that's why anybody anybody that knows whenever they're around you know i will announce it to the whole world that they are back and all of that but okay. you, yeah you're going to say I something debunk the statement by um, there was a statement by somebody who said that western culture also is, superior. Plays, is superior to us before western culture became so engraved in our society back in the north I remember my mom saying this a lot that they didn't even know that they had people like that but they had people that they called I, I'm going let me to call the name Dandaudu. no it's Andaudu Andaudu I, mean, I, I don't speak Hamza <laughs> so they, and whatever they are the bottom line is this that they had already been in existence so for those so, that do not know what Andaudu means it's means. people that are cross dressers so but the only thing is that the difference then is that they only came out at night Yes. So they were they were guys that were looking like girls standing on the roadside and they were being picked up by guys. By guys. By guys at night. Yes, it. I saw them live. Yeah. Yes. So it's not about the Western culture. Mm. It's, an, it's I think it's more of a psychological thing and a self-esteem thing. So if you feel that, like he said, if you feel that, oh. The, a particular sex do not accept me the way I am, or for some reason I do not feel that I belong to this particular sex, and I'm looking for somebody who or a sex that will, you know, accept me with all my flaws, with all my problems. Have you seen drag queens talk? Drag queens <laughs> are brutal. No, but you see, let me they try to pass their message. But that's where Kemi's argument comes in very strong, where she talked about, you know, because if you if you put a lot of love in the Into heart the of child. a child yes. so even if the child goes to boarding house nobody is going to because i think it was alpha that mentioned something about being but, empty yeah. yes so you're not looking for something to fill you, you up you so if you're already filled up mm -hmm. you understand i don't think you'll be looking for something to, to empty. why i said self-esteem if you if if my parents love me so much and they love me to the extent that they feel that i'm a demigod why would I want somebody else to fill me mm. up? Okay. We have Floorman the Prophet. Okay. Indeed. Calling. <laughs> thank you for calling. Hello. Good. good evening. Hi. Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Yeah. Um, see, I, I, I don't want to introduce a topic, a very nice topic. I'm telling you, if I am to be left alone to decide, and then public, government owned public school, uh, public school should be scrapped. It should be scrapped because there is no one something. If you see what, especially those people who see girls schools, you see what they do there, and you will now say, you say for me, when I send my children, not for me, when I send my children to boarding school. So I, I, I want to advise. If we are so strong with boarding school, let it be this missionary school. Here, the, the men of God will make sure that people live a, a godly life. A godly life. Because, if, because the government of today doesn't look into this, their own, the government of public school. So, with that, you see people be behaving. Children is behaving. At the end of the day, we don't get what we want from our children. So, 
I, if I'm to know, the government wants to see what is going to be cut. But the mission wants to be encouraged. Thank you very much. Thank you, clergyman. Okay. <laughs> you know? Very school. I have a response for that. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to say, <laughs> Alpha, hit them because I'm okay. feeling my vibe. <laughs> because... <laughs> Um, this is not about missionary schools. I'm assuming yeah. like um, Catholic schools, Christian mm. schools. Exactly. Funnily enough, it's in places like this mm -hmm. that you will see the worst cases of homosexuality and then the negative effects. Because what I've noticed about those kinds of schools and actually a lot of cultures within Nigeria is that people have put so much structure to God that God is now referred to as a God of fear and not of love. Mm -hmm. So without that love, that love that you are saying is supposed to fill you up, exactly. if I'm just like, okay, I'm not supposed to do this because I'm not supposed to do this, I'm just living a life of fear, yeah. that lack of expression is just going to be like a compression spring, yeah. for example, and then at every point in time, the spring will reach its limit and it will have to rebound. So what you're really doing is just suppressing the problem until it becomes too big to mm -hmm. control. I was even going to answer Flowman. October 1, the movie by, um, um, what's his name? Kunle Afolayo. Yeah. Where the, the man was sodomized by the priest. That he now became a serial killer. The, <laughs> the, 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 the prince's son. But, you know, these things do happen. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so, but I, I, I understand his strong argument on same sex. Because I know he's bigger. I remember there was a school I was supposed to go to. I, I can't remember the name of the school now. The, the school, when we now went for a debate yeah. for my school, New Breed, we went for a debate there. We heard, the day we arrived to school for a debate, we heard that two students, I think one had just died. Why? Because the girls were trying to experiment and then, you they know, went they went too far. And they used something they were not supposed to use and it broke and the girl died. You know, so <laughs> these things are real. It happens. Hmm. So, and I understand that, that, um, Yes, okay, so in a mixed school, okay, yeah. it might be here. But in a same-sex school, it, it might be is. here. As we wrap up the conversation, yes. what are your final thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> My final thoughts. Um, I think we should, you know, as parents, as um, educators, we should pay more attention to the children. We should interact with them more to understand their, their challenges and their problems and work on their self-esteem and whatever psychological problem they think they have, they should understand that it's not something that hasn't happened before. That they should, you know, be comfortable with who they are or however they perceive their environment to be. You know, they should be good to themselves. Okay, so Alpha. Confidence plays a huge role. Um, to wrap up, I feel like we should actually just begin to help ourselves. Like, I, I'm not really sure how exactly to put it, but then I feel like we should stop trying to put so much structure and so much force to everything that we do. Because force can go in one way and can go in the other way, dependent on who is receiving the force. So we need to begin to make ourselves, people like me, people like the people that are younger than me, to see reason in the reasons, sorry, see reasons in the things that we tell them to do, the things that we say, okay, don't be a homosexual, don't do this, don't do that. Let's actually make them see reason instead of just telling them and leaving. Don't do it. Exactly, just don't do it. <laughs> because without that reason, then there is no certainty that it is actually not going to happen. The child is still confused. The person doesn't know why he shouldn't do it. So. Mm -hmm. So I would say that for boarding houses, I don't think boarding houses are breeding grounds for homosexuality. Yeah. Yes, it has happened. People have taken advantage of the fact that these are children that are lonely. And don't forget that a lot of children that go into boarding house, that is just about the time where they're discovering their sexuality, yeah. they are their selves, they're beginning to understand their hormones, you know, hormonal changes and all of that, their emotions That's and all of that. So it's not so much of the boarding house. I think it's more of the, I think I'll go back to what Alpha had said, and I think you mentioned it as well, the emptiness, you know. Yeah. It is the emptiness that these children will try to fail, right? So um, when we have a lot of um, adults right now acting up and all of that, you would know that it, yes, there's a lot of dysfunctionality. It's coming from somewhere. Yeah. So I would say um, boarding houses are not all that bad. But I would also say to the boarding house handlers of the children, 
pay a little more attention, right? Because again, for mixed schools, for mixed schools, they will say things like, um, boys don't go to girls' hostels, girls don't go to boys' hostels. You also need to allow the boys to be comfortable around the girl. Let exactly. him not feel, or the girl to be comfortable around the boy. Exactly. Let him not feel like, oh, there's a no-go area. Because you know why? What then eventually happens, if there's a predator yeah. that is a homosexual, and they won't suspect us, we are exactly. guys, that eventually, you say, eh, this is, there's no suspicion, I'm not with a girl. Exactly. So, that's what, so they don't take an alternate exactly. option, exactly. you know. So that's usually, you yeah. know, yeah, that's usually the circle because there are signs that breed some of these things. So I like what you said about not putting stringent rules. I like what you said about being yourself, discover yourself and know that it's not something that is new. I mean, I was introduced to lesbianism, but it did not stick. It's not like, you know, somebody tried it. They tried to, you know, press some things. <laughs> but it, it didn't stick because there was no landing space for it to stick. <laughs> so, it, yeah, you, you so, I, I, so, and I want to go back to what Kemi had talked about, love. Yes. Please dose your children with a lot of love. Um, dose them with a lot of love. So I just want to take this final comment from one of our audience. It says, modern parents have to work hard on their children's character and pray a lot for well-being of their children. We are living in an instant world where morals are short in supply. So hopefully, by God's grace, we would, um, we would keep our children safe and all of that. If you choose homosexuality, let it not be that you were, you were, you were cajoled. cajoled to do it. You understand? Because I know some people, regardless of what happens, that is what they say. That, that is, they believe that that is who, That's they are. who they are. But there are some people that were forced into it. If you mm -hmm. hear their stories, it's Absolutely. actually very gory. Exactly. You know, very gory, but they are just walking dysfunctional people. Exactly. All right, so that's all we can take on the show. Thank you so much, Alpha Sally. Thank you, Isi of We had Pleasure. an amazing conversation. Absolutely. All right, so before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram. It's at We Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, we're planning a giveaway to say thank you to you for believing in the Waze brand and following the conversation. So do well to follow us right now. Follow us now. It's at Way Show Africa. Like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to follow us as well. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. High school is very intense for everyone. But at a boarding school, because you are there 24 hours a day, everything gets magnified. So from what um, EC had said, don't get overwhelmed, right? It's not new. Don't get overwhelmed. Try to keep it together. All right, we'll see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. Thank you.